Hi, this is Judith Karakshan and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 153 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case illustrating some of the challenges in CTO-PCI in previous bypass patients, specifically calcification and tortuosity. The patient had coronary bypass 13 years prior to this intervention. He had presented recently with non-STEMI, and that was due to occlusion of the saphenous vein graft. That was recanalized, but because of high likelihood of the vein graft to become reoccluded, he was referred for PCI of the native right coronary artery chronic total occlusion. These are the angiographic images. The vein graft had restored flow after it was successfully recanalized. The right coronary artery is not engaged in this particular image, but then it was occluded in its proximal segment. So we have uh, occlusion of the proximal RCA, length about 40 millimeters. This is the entry zone, and there is the vein graft for the retrograde approach. And this was one case in which uh, we performed uh, CT and geography before. CT and geography can be extremely useful to clarify proximal cap ambiguity. We can see here that there is a small branch at the proximal cap, making it very difficult to understand where the vessel originates. But the co-registration, which is an extra tool taking the pictures from the CT and fusing them with the angiogram, allows also an estimate of the course of the vessel. And we can see here there is a significant tortuosity. There is an upward bend of the proximal right coronary artery. This is another example showing that there is the upward bend. The green means there is no foreshortening. The red means that there is some foreshortening. We initially tried uh, briefly with undergrade crossing. However, we were unable to cross. The wire kept on entering into this small branch. And therefore, we decided to switch to the retrograde approach. We engaged the vein graft to the right coronary with a multipurpose guide catheter. And then we had the difficulty advancing equipment retrograde in the distal RCA due to this very acute angle. One way to deal with this tortuosity is to use the balloon deflection technique in which a balloon is inflated just at the bifurcation, blocking advancement of the wire into the distal vessel and providing some support for the guide wire and the microcatheter to be advanced uh, uh, through this area of tortuosity. This was done in this case. This is the small deflection balloon inflated into the right coronary artery, distal to the touchdown. And then by doing that, we were able to advance a pilot 200 and a caravel retrograde into the distal right coronary artery. So deflection balloon technique, extremely useful for this highly angulated distal SVG touchdown anastomosis. We were then able to advance the caravel microcatheter to the distal right coronary artery and um, attempted to make progress in the retrograde direction. However, it was extremely challenging to advance equipment. And during attempts to do so, there was a loss of both uh, the guide wire and the microcatheter position. You can see here the guide was no longer seated properly, and then everything just popped out. And the lesson here is sometimes we become too focused on the wire manipulation, and we forget to look at the guide catheter, and that can result in loss of the entire equipment position. The vessel was re-engaged, and a guide extension was used, a Godzilla. This time, we also used a Supercross 120 to go retrograde. That was challenging. But eventually, we were able, with the blocking balloon technique, once again, to advance the caravel to the mid-right coronary artery. This is an injection through the mid RCA. So that actually the occlusion length was longer than we had appreciated. There is um, occlusion all the way from the proximal RCA to the mid to distal RCA with heavy calcification. We had difficulty making progress. Therefore, we decided to switch uh, to the undergrade approach again. And we used the scratch and go technique. This is a technique we don't typically use these days, in which a stiff guide wire is used to create a a subintimal entry point, and then a microcatheter and a polymer jacketed wire is inserted that can then track through this subintimal space. So this is a pilot 200, and uh, that was advanced. The course of the wire looks a little weird. However, based on the co-registration, we knew 
that actually that was the true course of the vessel going up and then turning down. That provided reassurance that you are in the right place. Moreover, using a knuckle provides also some safety margin because knuckles are unlikely to perforate the vessel. We can appreciate the extreme tortuosity and calcification. The vessel goes up, goes down, turns to the left. There's a lot of tortuosity in this vessel. And it took several polymer jacketed wires, Fielder XT, Fighter and Pilot 200, to make some progress and make them overlap with the retrograde guide wire advanced through the Caravel microcatheter. Eventually, we did the reverse car technique in the mid-right coronary artery. Getting things there was extremely challenging, requiring predilatation with multiple small balloons. But eventually, using an undergrade guide extension, we were able to advance a retrograde Pilot 200 guide wire into the undergrade guide extension. Then the caravel was inserted, and then an R350 guide wire was successfully externalized. And this actually proved to be critical for the success of the case because support was very challenging through this very tortuous and calcified right coronary artery. So had we not had an externalized guide wire, we might not have been able to deliver equipment and stand the lesion. We performed extensive uh, balloon predilatation. We had significant difficulty delivering stents. Additional predilatation was done, and then guide extension was used and we were eventually able to deploy a drag eluting stent overlapped with another one more proximally and another one in the proximal right coronary artery followed by multiple balloon post dilations. We did have uh, a bifurcation on the distal cap that is why we used a twin pass and a samurai RC to advance a guide wire to the posterior lateral branch and then placed an additional drag eluting stent in the distal right coronary artery. We then decided to occlude the vein graft because it had brisk flow. And this is something that is still being debated on whether SVGs should be occluded after being used for retrograde recanalization of the native vessel CTO. But there's concern that this competitive flow may lead to stent thrombosis. And that is why in this case we used coils to occlude that vessel. The coils can sometimes take uh, some days or hours to close, and there's still flow through the vein graft, but this could potentially close once the heparin action is reversed. But then we did have a nice final result in the native right coronary artery. There is T3 flow into the right coronary, posterior, lateral, and PDA. So an excellent result was achieved despite the excessive tortuosity and calcification. This was not an easy case, it took an entire day, but we were very happy it was eventually successful. Several lessons from this case. The first one is uh, the use of the blocking or deflection balloon for wiring through angulation. That was critical for going retrograde through the SVG to the distal RCA. Second, use of CT co-registration that can help clarify the vessel course it was instrumental in showing this upward bend on the proximal RCA and help direct guide wires along the course of the vessel. The third one is the importance of guide extension, both in the undergrade and the retrograde direction. We had both a retrograde guide extension to improve support and an undergrade one. The undergrade not only provided support for equipment delivery, but also was um, used to facilitate the reverse car technique with uh, providing a target for the retrograde guide wire. The fourth lesson is that having an externalized guide wire provides a lot of support and can facilitate stenting highly complex calcified and tortuous lesions. And finally, and this is a controversial point, but uh, in cases when there is a patent SVG in the target vessel, then uh, the if there is success in recanalizing the native coronary artery, the SVG can be occluded to minimize competitive flow and reduce the potential risk for stent thrombosis. Thank you.